Hello guys, I know it has been a while since I have uploaded over here. It is, it is because I just got married and it was on my honeymoon. I'm actually a little bit sick, so you can kind of tell by my voice if I'm like out of breath or like coughing at all, nasally, I apologize. Um, so today I wanted to do a video all about my wedding day. Um, I wanted to answer any questions you guys have for me about my wedding day, how it went, any advice that I would give for future brides, or if you're in wedding planning mode right now, um, you know, how things went. And I have done a ton of wedding planning videos over on my vlog channel. If you guys have missed that, you can go see my whole wedding planning playlist over there. I will have a link in the description, but I basically share every step of the way from picking my venue to going to appointments, um, sharing hauls of things that I've ordered for the wedding. You guys can see all of that over there. So if you have missed any of those videos, go check that out. I also uploaded a behind the scenes kind of video of me getting ready on the day of the wedding. It was anyway. like a little behind the scenes of the day. I will be posting I my official wedding video, like that's shot from the videographer, on this channel. I think I'm gonna do just other videos, like split it up on my vlog and here, but I wanna do the highlight video over on this channel, my main channel. Yeah, if you uh, have not seen any of those, please go check them out. You can see, I mean, I will be sharing some pictures a little bit in this video, I think, but um, you guys can see like my dress and how I got my hair done and just, yeah, a whole like little behind the scenes of, of the day. Whatever my, my friends filmed for me that day, they just like had the camera and just would like take little clips. Um, so I'm gonna jump into your questions. You guys have sent me over so many questions. I don't know how many I'm gonna be able to answer, but I'm gonna do my best. And if you guys do have any other questions and you want to leave them in the comments or um, message me like on Instagram or comment on my Instagram if I did not answer your question, um, please let me know. I will I'll try to do my best to answer as many as I can. So Tony XXOO asked, what was your favorite part of the wedding? Honestly, just everything, the entire day. I feel like the biggest thing for me and Anthony was just feeling the overwhelming amount of love that day and just knowing that everyone was there for us. Um, and I will get into like a little bit of some advice that I have for you guys just the day of, but yeah, I feel like the my favorite part of the day was just like, honestly, the love, If does that even count? Like feeling the love the day of like I don't really know if that counts as, like my favorite part but I mean honestly I would say that and also the moment that the barn doors opened I got married in a barn outside um, I have pictures um, for you guys on my Instagram if you want to check that out and you can check out the um, venue I will have all of my vendors listed below as well but we got married in this barn outside and um, as soon as they opened up the doors and I saw him that moment right there, like that was undescribable. Um, it was just amazing. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the wedding, but I mean, I could literally just say the whole day and all the love that I felt. What did your dad say when he saw you in your wedding dress for the first time? Um, he just smiled, um, started to tear up, and he just said, wow. And then I actually, when he started to tear up, I said, hold on, I have something for you. And I gave him a little handkerchief. I gave my mom and my dad a handkerchief and they both had like a nice little, I'll try to post a picture right here of my mom holding hers, um, but I gave my, my dad his and he just started crying and I was hugging him and it was just such a special moment. Um, probably one of the first times I've seen my dad cry in a very, very long time. Oh, I just, I wanna, I wanna relive it all over again. A lot of people were asking, did Anthony cry when he saw me? Um, honestly, I feel like maybe he teared, he told me he teared up a little bit seeing like Bella walk down the aisle in front of me, his daughter. I think he said um, that he did get a little teary eyed, but no, he didn't cry. And I did tell him, I was like, I really, really want you to cry. But he was like, if I don't cry, like, don't be upset. Like, I just, there was just the biggest smile on his face and I could just tell he was like looking at me up and down. 
I rewatched the video because like there's an iPhone video of me walking down the aisle. Um, my aunt took it, so I just rewatched that a lot. But yeah, it kind of like shows me and then pans over to him and you could just see like he was just smiling the whole time. So was I. Like we just locked eyes and I never like looked around. I just had my eyes on him the whole time walking down the aisle. Um, so he did tear up a little, but no, he didn't like cry. And I didn't cry either. And I actually was so surprised that I held it together walking down the aisle. I was super, super nervous. And a lot of people were asking me like, like, were you nervous? Um, so I'll get that out of the way because there were so many people asking me, like, how was I the day of? So I was pretty calm in the, in the morning. Um, I felt, like, fine. I was eating, uh, which is another thing. I was really worried that I wasn't going to, like, eat or anything and that my friends are going to be like, come on, Meg, you got to eat. But I did eat. I had, like, half of a bagel, a little bit of fruit. I had some yogurt. I think that's one of the biggest things is make sure you eat the day of. Even though you don't feel like you can, you're too nervous, it's so important because the day is so long and by the time you're like done your pictures and everything, you're gonna be sitting down for dinner and that's gonna be the first thing you put in your body. So like, I just would definitely recommend make sure you eat and I did. I was, I was so much more calm in the morning and then leading up to me doing my makeup and getting in the limo to leave, that is when I was the most nervous. Um, I got a little anxious and I'll talk about a little bit of like my skin issues leading up to the wedding. Oh my god, it was a disaster. Um, but I was a little nervous doing my makeup because I did have a lot of breakouts that I had to cover. I had this huge cyst on my forehead, which I now have a scar from. I also have a scar in between the middle of like my, like the bridge or my nose or in between my eyes. Um, I have a scar now. But I had really bad acne that I needed to cover so I was a little stressed about that and also I'm doing my own makeup so I didn't really put it on someone else to do my makeup it was a little bit I felt a little bit more under pressure the day of because of that um but I feel like the moments that I was the most nervous was in the limo and you could tell from the behind the scenes vlog in the limo I was just so nauseous and just it was just all nerves and butterflies um, I wasn't nervous to marry him. It's just, you're just nervous the day of. Like, you just want everything to be perfect. You want everything to go right. I was nervous about the ceremony, mainly. So, I was nervous in the limo, and then I was also really nervous and, like, jittery before I walked into the barn. Like, when I was walking outside with my dad, about to go into the barn and walk down the aisle. That's when I was the most nervous. Um, but yeah, other than that, after the ceremony, I was just so happy so just like carefree like I just like that was it like the ceremony was done I had nothing else to worry about and I will get into one thing that went wrong the day of um I will explain all of that as well because I got a lot of questions about like did anything go wrong I will talk about that too I'm sorry I'm like all over the place right now Kentrell Kendra can we see a close-up of your ring so I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but this is the rings. I have two, I have two bands. I picked them out. And of course, Anthony picked my ring, but. Blue Eyed Queen 2014 said, what were your first thoughts after seeing Anthony on the other end of the aisle? Um, I was just so happy. I just was overjoyed, so happy and just my thoughts were like, this is it, like, we're doing this, like, this is the day that I've been dreaming of, um, yeah. Gabby V 21 said, do you regret not hiring a wedding planner? So I did not have a wedding planner. Um, I basically did all of the planning myself, um, with the help of my mom. My mom did a lot, and of course Anthony helped <laughs> as well, but I did pretty much everything on my own. We, me and Anthony, of course, agreed on like the color scheme and we like picked out like what we wanted our like bridesmaids and groomsmen to wear. We picked our florals together, which I mean, I kind of like had an idea before I have everything on Pinterest, but yeah, we did, I did everything on my own, which was a lot. Looking back, do I regret it? Like a part of me kind of wishes that I had someone to help throughout the way just to like relieve some of my stress. Because, you know, all the phone calls, all the meetings, you know, everything's 
like on you like you pretty much are doing it all if you don't have a planner I also got asked if I had a day of coordinator I did not have a day of coordinator um, I mainly just made jobs like for like my sister and like my friends were there like every step of the way to help me like I need this I need this I need my I need you to call my hairstylist like to give me touch-ups like my I, sister and my friends did so much for me my bridesmaids um, but I also had two girls at the venue and um, I have to give a shout out to Shannon. Shannon, if you're watching this, I love you. You are amazing. I cannot say enough good things about just a job well done. You did so amazing and you seriously calmed me so much the day of. She's pretty much been with me every step of the way as far as the venue is concerned. So she was kind of like my day of girl there through the whole ceremony and reception at the venue. So like I didn't have a planner throughout the whole planning process. But, but I did I, have two girls, Shannon and Corinne, at the venue, and Shannon was working with me from the beginning, so I have to give a shout out to her. But they did amazing, both of them. They were there every step of the way, and Shannon actually helped me with something that went wrong the day of, which I was so grateful for her for, because I almost had a little bit of a meltdown. <laughs> but um, yeah, long story short, do I regret not having a planner? I would say no, like I don't regret anything. Um, it would have been helpful, but I don't think it's necessary to spend your money on a planner because you really can do it all yourself. Lindsay the Best said, did you say your own personalized vows or ones by the priest? I did get a lot of people asking uh, about our vows, if, if we, we wrote vows to each other or like how we said vows. So we just did like traditional vows, like, like I, Megan, take you, Anthony, to be my husband, blah, blah, blah. Like that was... It was a traditional Roman Catholic. I am Catholic, so is Anthony. Um, a lot of people asked, did we regret not getting uh, married in the church? I kind of talked all about this, but we really wanted to get married in the church, and we had a lot of issues with it. Um, they were super strict, and because Anthony was previously married, I go into all detail about this in a vlog. So again, that's on my wedding playlist if you want to know like what happened throughout the process. But um, because Anthony was married before, he had to get an annulment, and um, we were in such a short amount of time, like I think 11 or 10 months, planning it ever since we changed like our date. So when we were talking to the church about it, they really couldn't tell us anything regarding our ceremony. They couldn't tell us what time, they couldn't tell us like how it would go, nothing, until he got his annulment. So... It was just a lot of stress on me, like, I just wanted to, like, solidify the ceremony and how things were going to be, and I couldn't really do any of that, and also with, like, florals and stuff, they're just very strict. Um, it was just a lot of the unknown and waiting for the annulment, so it just didn't work out within the time period that we had, you know, for a wedding. So, we ended up getting married at our venue in the barn and it was a religious ceremony we did have a priest um, he did an amazing ceremony and we were so happy with it I don't regret not getting married in the church we are going to get our marriage blessed by the church um, so that is something we are going to do but I loved our ceremony and I would not have changed anything so Emily Bemi 17 said was there anything that went wrong that you thought would totally jeopardize the wedding um, so like I said, there was, and I will, I'll just tell you guys the story now, um, there was something that went wrong and that I was unhappy with, um, but no, it didn't jeopardize the wedding at all, it wasn't anything like too serious, like us not bringing our marriage license and not being able to have a ceremony, like it wasn't anything like that. Um, basically my florals were all messed up. Um, I actually wasn't super happy and again, this is just like, you guys might look at my floral pictures and stuff, and you might be like, oh my god, they're gorgeous. What are you talking about? So I will explain. My florals were gorgeous, but there, there were, were multiple things that were completely wrong. Um, so my bouquet, I wasn't happy with. Um, there were actual, like, pieces that I broke off, like, literally just cut off before walking down the ceremony. Literally, within, like, five minutes of me walking, I was cutting things off my bouquet that I did not like at all. Um, I don't know what it was, but it was not what I asked for. Um, 
I feel like she didn't listen to me as much and I said like over and over again this is one advice that I would give as far as florals now not all florists are the same but I do believe that florists kind of have the mind of their own and they like to kind of do their own thing and they're like oh this will look really pretty I was so specific on what I wanted like I literally it was down to like I don't want any roses I want these specific flowers I want this nestled in like I was so specific on what I wanted um, as far as my cake, my cake, I don't even know what the florals were on my cake. Now, the pictures that you guys saw, was it fixed? Shannon actually called my florist. As soon as I walked in the venue and saw my cake, I was like, what the heck is this? It was nothing that I asked for and I hated it. I know hate's a strong word, but when you have expectations and when you pay a certain amount of money for something, you expect that like you have expectations right so I saw the cake I was so disappointed and Shannon called and had them come and redo it redo the florals and it was beautiful after they did it I loved it but again I asked specifically and I showed her pictures I had a whole Pinterest board literally Pinterest board of florals for my wedding um, another thing was that Anthony now this is just getting like I could just tell you my florals were messed up that was it but I'm just gonna go into detail Anthony asked specifically that his boutonniere my dad's and his dad's would all be the same and the groomsmen would be a little bit different the boutonnieres were all the same none of them were distinguished between the groom the fathers or the, the groomsmen so that was pretty disappointing because we asked specifically that we wanted his boutonnieres to be slightly different I mean he's the groom like that just makes sense right um, another thing was in, in the, the barn, I wasn't crazy about the florals. Um, she also got like the mantle all messed up. Like I don't even know what was on there and honestly it looked like florals that should be on a casket. I'm being really harsh, but I, again, I was just really disappointed. Um, everything else was like beautiful. Like the centerpieces were gorgeous. I loved the centerpieces. Um, all the girls bouquets gorgeous loved so them. I asked for and I'll show you guys pictures. I asked for like a big um, Kind of like garland like big greenery garland kind of hanging off my sweetheart table, which would be repurposed or like flipped so it would be hanging on the mantle in the barn and then repurposed to the sweetheart table kind of something like this Kind of something like this like kind of hanging off the sweetheart table not specifically these florals but you know what i mean by like the greenery kind of on the sweetheart like a big like garland like a big um, garland and like hanging off my sweetheart table that is what i asked for that is not what i got at all i got this like weird kind of bouquet that we ended up having to put on the floor in front of our sweetheart table and we had fake flowers on our sweetheart table now no one would have known any of this and they would have thought oh it's beautiful but again it's not what I asked for so I was really upset about that I really wanted these big and we had like lanterns and it would have looked so beautiful like on our sweetheart table we had the Mr. and Mrs. and I wanted it kind of like behind the Mr. and Mrs. sign kind of flowing down the sweetheart table again, this is supposed to be in the barn on the mantle fireplace big garland draping I did not get that so long story short that was the only thing that went wrong the day of was my florals um, I'm still really disappointed in that I ended up having like you know three in-person meetings with her like five phone calls you know it was I called her like the week of my wedding and was like making sure she had everything correct and, and a lot of it was wrong so I was that was the biggest disappointment um, I'm gonna complain just because originally we did have our florals to be cheaper than they actually were because we made a lot of changes and we ended up doing more with the centerpieces so I feel like for the amount that we paid and what we asked for we did not get that so that was the only thing that went wrong the day of now I said like I had a little bit of a meltdown and I was upset about it and pissed off but I said multiple times, I was like, if this is the only thing that has gone wrong, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. You know, everything still looks gorgeous. Everything still looks beautiful. Just certain things weren't what we asked for. So, yeah, that was that the only thing that went wrong. But no, it didn't jeopardize the wedding. It didn't jeopardize the day. 
it was fine. And Shannon came to the rescue and had her change my cake, which thank freaking God she did because I was so happy with it after it was fixed. Lex Ben 28 said, did you take Anthony's last name? What made you decide to change names or not? Um, yes, I did take Anthony's last name. I am now Megan Lee Morrison. A lot of people think my name, my last name's Lee, but it's actually Crow. Sorry, my throat is like killing me. Um, my last name was Crow and now it's Morrison. So Megan Morrison. Um, I actually am in the process of changing my name officially, but yes, I did take his name and it wasn't really any question. I knew I wanted to take his name. I did kind of think like, oh, should I be Megan Crow Morrison? Um, but I just decided to keep Megan Lee Morrison because my middle name is like on a lot of my business stuff. Like I really go by Megan Lee. I don't go by my last name. So I just figured I would keep Megan Lee and change my name to Morrison. One thing I can say, because a lot of people were asking about like pricing for venues. One thing I can say is that pricing does vary obviously from vendor to vendor, but also it varies from like the month and the season you get married. So one thing was we actually got a really good deal with multiple of our vendors um, because we were having a winter wedding and it was February. February is not a very popular month I don't think and it's kind of like off season which now I feel like with wedding season it's all year long because so many people are having winter weddings now. But um, we got really great deals on multiple of our vendors. Like our DJ, we got a great deal because it was February. Our venue itself, we got a good deal. And um, we got like a different winter package, um, which was discounted. And then for our florals, it was also different with like what I specifically wanted. Now, it could have been the season and the florals that they had because of the season. But I also asked for specific flowers. And like my flowers, I guess, didn't cost as much as like some flowers that would be in the summertime you know what I mean so I think it just varied on like what was in season but yeah that's one thing that I can say is that vendors did discount or have different pricing for different seasons at least from where I am and the vendors around me so that was a great perk for having a winter wedding um, because it was kind of like off season a lot of people are asking questions about was this dress worth it do you regret stressing as much as you did I don't, again, I don't regret anything, but looking back, the day was so perfect and I feel like all of my stress and hard work paid off. I think that's the only thing I would say. I feel like it paid off. I feel like I did everything I could to make the day perfect within the power I had planning it myself. I think I went a little bit crazy with the stress and, you know, all the moments that I was like crying about things and feeling so overwhelmed. Yeah, I probably was being a little dramatic. The day ended up being beautiful and amazing. Could I have not stressed as much? Probably. But my hard work paid off and that is, that is all I can say about that. Who cried? Bella, Mom, Mackenzie, you, Aunt. Um, I feel like we all cried at some point or another throughout the day. Bella, I don't know if she cried at all. Um, I think if anything, she was so incredibly happy and excited the whole day, like constant smile on her face. Um, my mom, of course, cried. She, she cried, cried when I gave her her gift. She cried when I was walking down the aisle. My sister did. Um, they also cried, like, so in the video, which you might see, I read the letter that Anthony gave me the day of. So we did exchange letters and everyone in the room was crying. My, all my bridesmaids, my mom, my dad were in the room and they were all tearing up and crying and I was crying too. Um, I don't think that Anthony read my letter on camera. Like I think, well, he read my letter but didn't read it out loud, but I read his out loud. Um, we were kind of like back and forth on if we wanted to read it out loud and I kind of wish that he did, but the videographer like I told him that I didn't want him to and then by the time the videographer got to me to read it, I was like, okay, I guess I'll read it out loud. So um, we do have Anthony's letter that I read um, on camera. JustMoXO asked, how did Anthony react when he first saw you in your dress and how, and and was it how you expected? Um, do you have a second? Well, what's up? Can you come answer a question? How did Anthony react when he first saw you in your dress, and was it how you expected? Me? Oh, I guess this is asking for me. Yeah, that's... Okay, but we'll do... I, I already explained, like, how I felt. So, 
I'm going to just ask you, what did you think when you first saw me? And was my dress as you expected it to okay, be? Okay, well that goes hand in hand, because what was the first thing I told you about my first So thought? as soon as I walked up to the aisle, he said, what did you say? You were like, this is exactly what I pictured your dress to look yeah, like. Yeah, I told you that. He literally said to me, it was probably like, what, a week or two before the wedding? I don't know. Something he, about that. Yeah, he was like, I feel like your dress is going to be like lace with like beading. You said oh, like... I was like off the shoulder with lace sleeves. Yeah, you said like embroidery or whatever. <laughs> and then um, you said, how did you say the back was going to look? Like a, I don't know, like a dropped back. Whatever you call it. Yeah. Low back or Low whatever. back. Yeah, but he literally described it like to a T. Like, she exactly thought I how. saw it. I, th I was like, did you see... She didn't say pictures? it then because she didn't want me to think that yeah. I was right, but she asked me afterwards. Did, yeah. Did, did I go on her phone and see it? I was like, no. And I didn't did, want to see it. What did you think when you first saw me? Everyone was asking, did you tear up? Did you cry? I said that you teared up a little bit. A little bit. What did you think? What do you mean? I told you, my first thought was, wow, it looks exactly like I thought I was going to look. <laughs> yeah, but like, what was your thoughts like when I was walking down the aisle? Anything you want to share? That you looked good? What do you mean? I don't, I didn't date you from like some extravagant Well, like I said, thought. like I, like as I was walking down the aisle, I felt like, wow, like this is it. This is happening. This is like the moment I've dreamed of. Yeah, it was awesome. I wasn't trying to overthink it. I was just enjoying it. My first thought was, wow, the dress looks exactly like I thought it would look. Yeah. So you weren't surprised at all? No, I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Okay. And I was happy that you had your hair the way I wanted it. And that my hair? Okay, yeah. let me tell you this one thing. He was so particular about how he wanted my hair to look. Like, when I did my second hair trial, first of all, the first hair trial, like, he wasn't crazy about because it's pretty much how I wear my hair all the time. These two pieces in the front, half up half down. When I went for the second time, I did more of like those like vintage waves, which you could kind of see. And I didn't do it super dramatic, but I had like half of my hair up on the side. You guys will see pictures and kind of like the waves, but I had my hair kind of pulled like back on one side and then more on this side. And when he saw pictures of me after my hair trial, he's like, I want your hair to look like that. Like I want it to look exactly like that when you're walking down the aisle. Like, are you sure you're doing that? I was like, yeah, but you kept saying over and over again, like, no, like, I want one hair exactly on the side. like that. Like, he was so particular. Not of anything else. Not about my makeup, not about the dress. Like, he was so particular about how he wanted my hair walking down the aisle. So I was sure. Because it it's my favorite way that you do your hair. Yeah, like, every time I wear my hair like that, he's like, oh, I just love your hair like that. I just, it's my favorite. It suits you. So, anyways... I had my hair like on one side when I walked down the aisle and I pretty much had it like that f during all the pictures but he just yeah he was happy about that. Fox Princess 92288 said what song did you walk down the aisle to? So in our ceremony we had all instrumental music playing and I will share with you guys some of our music um, in the description. I'll also share what our first dance was, the, the song I danced to my dad with. You guys will see a lot of that in the videos to come, but I will share it with you guys if you're interested. Um, so I actually walked to Ed Sheeran Perfect, but it was instrumental by Daniel Jang, and it was um, a violin. And then Anthony actually walked into Flashlight, which was, it's by Jesse J, but instrumental. Uh, Brooklyn Duo, and my bridal party with the parents walked into... Brooklyn Duo again, um, which is like a piano and cello. Um, theirs was Love Me Like You Do by Ellie Goulding, and I love, love, love that song. But yeah, I walk to Perfect, they walk to Love Me Like You Do, but again, it was all instrumental. You guys can check them out. Um, and I also have, I believe I have like my wedding playlist on Spotify if you want to check that out as well. Um, Stace824 said, something you really appreciated your bridesmaid doing the day of little things. Um, I would just say, like, making sure that, like, I had water, that I, you know, felt okay if I needed any food. Also, like, reapplying my lipstick or, like, my lip gloss, making sure they had that on hand. Because I didn't carry around a purse. I know a lot of people were asking that as well. Like, did you carry a little purse? Did you carry something the day of? I didn't carry anything. It's also, I also couldn't carry tissues or anything, like, in my dress. Because I know, like, I could have put it 
well actually I couldn't put it in mine because mine actually had like an, an illusion neckline so um, there was like kind of like a netting I don't know what you would call it but it's like an illusion so there's no way that I could have hid tissues or anything unless I put them in my flowers but yeah they kind of were just there like touching things up for me asking if I needed anything it's just the little things you know like you're so like in the moment and not thinking about a lot so the fact that they're there like hey Meg what do you need do you need anything do you need water do you need this um, that helped a lot and also retouching on my lips, um, making sure that like my hair looked okay, my dress looked okay in the pictures. Um, Mackenzie, my sister, was there like readjusting my dress. That's one thing like for your maid of honor or whoever's closest to you in like the pictures, make sure that they are there to adjust your dress. Sometimes your photographer will do it for you, but it does help to have your girls just on hand and know to like fix your dress, fix your train for your pictures. Um, but again, like for your photographers and stuff, usually they'll do that for you. But during the ceremony, I know my sister like held my flowers and was fixing my dress anytime that I was like walking or came back um, to the altar. I would just say like little things like that, making sure that I was okay and I looked on point. <laughs> SM Williams said, did you use a planner uh, to plan your wedding? If so, could you mention where you got it? I use the Erin Condren planner. Um, they actually have a timeline in the planner, which is mainly what I used. It goes through like every single month of what you're supposed to be getting done leading up to the wedding. Um, and it goes by months and then also like the week of the wedding, like to do's. But you can honestly find those things like on Pinterest. I did not use the Erin Condren planner throughout like the whole year as a regular planner. I just used it for like the back of it. I used it to budget and it has some, has some really great tips and like um, pages in the back for the planning process and the timeline. So that really did help me. That is the one that I used, but I know there's a lot on the market. So um, yeah. Whereas 2009 said, what was your first and song? I can feel the love when you sing it to each other in the video. Um, we, I did show a little snippet on my Instagram story. You guys can check that out. I do have a bunch of like videos and pictures of from the wedding um, on my wedding highlight reel, like on my Instagram page. So you guys can see that. Um, we danced to From the Ground Up by Dan and Shay. Dan and Shay is like our favorite band right now. We saw them um, in concert with the Rascal Flats. We, we fell in love with like both their albums. We are obsessed with all their songs. Great country band and sing um, Tequila if you guys know that song. Uh, we also love Speechless which is another song that was played at our wedding. It was actually a dedication song so Anthony sung it to me. I was like in a chair in the middle of the dance floor and he did like a dedication song to me. It was so so sweet. You guys will have to wait to see that cried cried my eyes out sarah dunning underscore said do you prefer a venue that's all inclusive comes with catering flowers etc or pick your own i also saw melanie 2114 say was your venue all inclusive or did you have to hire separately so the only thing that was included with our venue was of course the catering all the food drinks um but our cake was included in the package for our venue. That was the only thing that was included. As far as the florals, that was separate. The DJ, that was separate. Um, calligraphy, that was separate. Hair, makeup, photography, videography, all separate. So yeah, the only thing that was included was the cake. Um, I don't know if I would prefer one or the other. I feel like you should just do your research on you know florals and different things like that because you might, you might end up with something that you don't like if everything's all included like it's I think it's pretty hard to have a venue where everything's included because kind of like you get what you get you know like you can do your research with vendors and really shop around if it's not included CKI Grace said did you set a goal weight for your wedding if so what help you what helped you out the most um so as far as my goal weight, I actually did reach my goal weight the week of the wedding, but I lost like the extra three, I lost the extra three pounds that I wanted to and I kind of tell you a little bit about what I felt about my dress the day of too because I felt like I lost the, that extra weight um, 
Again, I have a whole video on my vlog channel sharing with you guys the struggles of my dress. Um, I had some not so great dress fittings and it was a little bit nerve wracking. Um, I noticed that the day of the wedding that my dress didn't fit like super snug in like the stomach area which was the area that she kind of took it out a little bit so originally she took it in too much and it was too tight and then she took it out for my third fitting. I noticed that I think because I lost a little bit extra weight that and a lot and a lot of this is like inevitable especially with my type of dress with the material and all of the fabric that I had in a lot of my pictures or like videos I noticed that like my fabric kind of scrunched or like rouge a little bit in my stomach area which really frustrated me that was the only thing that I feel like I was upset about as far as like the way that I like looked and of course I wasn't so happy about my overall like appearance as far as my body we all have insecurities do I wish that I lost an extra like five 10 pounds of course like we all feel like that we all feel like we should lose weight and look you know look a certain way looking back I almost kind of wish that I looked more for a dress um, I'll tell you one thing when the seamstress was doing my dress she did tell me that most brides now I wish that and I don't know if the girl knew this I wish but someone I would have told me this when I purchased the dress or when I was trying it on. Um, the seamstress did say that every bride that has had my specific dress that I had hasn't been that happy with it. So that was like really kind of questionable to me. It kind of like made me a little worried and I was like, okay, am I not gonna be happy with it? Like, what's the problem? I almost wish that I did look a little bit more, um, I don't wanna say that I regret I don't want to say that I regret anything and I don't want to say that I wasn't happy with my dress but I do feel like I don't know I don't want to say any I don't want to like say anything because like I'm happy with everything I just there was just there so was many issues with my dress and the fabric itself wasn't the most comfortable like on my arms the beading um, I probably could have had a little bit more of a more comfortable lace I mean it was gorgeous I just the way that it fit me and again like the way it kind of like scrunched up on my stomach from moving which again I feel like is kind of inevitable it's like kind of what's gonna happen because the fabrics moving as you're walking um, the good thing was is that I hid a lot of that with my florals so like my florals were in front of like my stomach area majority of my pictures so I hid a lot of that but when I didn't have my florals in front of me I just didn't love the way that it looked in the front that could just be me being super critical and like very picky um, again it was gorgeous and I wouldn't necessarily say I would change anything but like looking back I kind of wish that I shopped a little bit more I only went to one place and do I think I could have had a better fitting dress Probably, but I was still like happy with it and I I loved it So yeah, I'm still weird about my dress just because of all the stuff that I had to go through and again Just the way that it fit me Not every angle looks the best uh, There's multiple pictures that I don't like at all You know the way that I looked in my dress um, But there's also ones that I like the way I look so I think it's just I don't know Enough talk about my dress. I've literally talked so much about it on my vlog channel and you guys are always sick of hearing it. Um, <laughs> oh my god. That wasn't even about my dress. It was about my my goal weight and it turned into that. But This is going to be literally the longest video ever. Michaela Scott said, I want to know more about your sweetheart table, the purpose and how it went for you guys. I also saw a lot of questions asking... Um, why we had a sweetheart table or our thoughts about being away from our bridal party. We actually really enjoyed that. It was really nice to have like our separate table of just for us. We just had time to like talk and like kind of soak everything in and it was honestly nice to just like sit there in silence and just like look around the room. If I could give any brides 
one piece of advice, like the biggest piece of advice is, and I'm telling a lot of my friends this too that are having weddings this year, take moments. A lot of people have told me this too, and we did that. Like I don't look back and think like, oh, I wish that I just like took a moment to, like I, I don't even think about that because I did do that. We both did. We took moments throughout the day, throughout the night, to just look around and soak everything in. And when and people ask me, like, did the day fly by? Like, did you notice that it was just like over and done with? And like, you look back and you're like, oh my God, like what happened? The day went by, honestly, no. Like I really, I mean, the day went fast, but it also didn't. Like I sit at the table together and we would just be like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. Like all of these people are here for us. They're all here to celebrate our love and we took that that time to like really embrace the day and like not think about anything else but that moment um, you know the day of your wedding you're getting pulled in all different directions your photographers telling you what to do you're having people come up to you wanting to take pictures with you talk to you you know and another thing that I was told actually from my friend was she was like, I noticed that you and Anthony never really left each other's side. And they feel like with a lot of weddings, you know, you kind of just like wander off or like, you know, the groom will be talking to these people and the bride will be talking to these people. But like we really tried to stick together. There was probably a couple moments where I was like, I lost my husband. And I was like, where is he? And, um, you know, he would be like off talking to someone or whatever. But we really stuck together the whole night. We danced together. We made sure that like everyone that we went up to, we went up to together. I feel like it was just, we were just together the whole night. And I think that's what made it so special is we were just together in every moment, if that makes sense. Um, and that's like the biggest advice I would give is just like, take it all in because it is going to be over before you know it and you have to just take moments i think once we were told like that we had to cut the cake that's when we realized like oh my god the night's about to end like i was starting to realize that like the hours were passing by um one thing i really did love was that during dinner time um, we asked our DJ to kind of play a little bit more like upbeat music halfway through just because I wanted to make sure that my guests were on the dance floor and having a good time like as much as possible. So my DJ did a really great job and I was also super picky about the music and the playlist. Um, I did see some questions asking like did we just let our DJ do whatever and play whatever he wanted? Did we have a playlist? We did. We were really specific on what was playing throughout the night and when. I'm not kidding, when my um, DJ had a call with me, it was like the last call that we had, um, he was like, you are one of the most organized brides I've ever worked with. And I was like, thank you so much. Um, I was just so picky and like particular about a lot. And I feel like that's just, that's okay. Like you're the bride, you're you know, it's your day. You can choose however you want it. I really loved the whole the way the whole night went and all we got were compliments, like the venue and just the music, the reception. You know, I feel like through the reception, it is so important. It is the whole night. Like when you think about it, when you think about a wedding, you think about, of course, the ceremony, but you think about the reception. That is the whole night, you know? I wanted to make sure that my guests were having a good time and that they were on the dance floor. It definitely went that way. Um, there wasn't anyone off the dance floor besides, like, people eating. But other than that, everyone had a great time, and that just made me feel so good. Like, I was like, they're doing their job, and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm definitely that type of person, and throughout the planning process, this is another piece of advice I can give. Um, throughout the planning process, I've always, and this is just the type of person I am, but I've always been the type of person that wants to please everyone. I am a people pleaser. I just felt like I needed to please everyone. And it got to the point where I was so overwhelmed and anxious about pleasing everyone that it just got to a point where I was like, this is our day. And I was told by other people too, like, it's your day. 
you guys make the decisions. Another big piece of advice I can give is do everything for you guys. Everything that you do, everything that you plan is how you guys should want it. Don't ever think that you're being selfish because at the end of the day, it's all about you guys. You guys get to make the overall decisions. You get to pick how your day goes and how you want it. Um, everyone has opinions. Everyone's throwing out, you know, what they think or how things should go. And, and you really just have to like take a step back and be like, look, this is our day. We're going to do what we want to do. Everything, everything within means as far as like financially, but you know what I mean? Like, don't feel like you're hurting anyone's feelings because at the end of the day, it's all about you. And that is the best part about your wedding is that everyone is there for you. And it's one of those days that it's like a once in a lifetime experience where the entire day is all about, besides like your birthday, but like, let's be real. Like your wedding day is all about you. Everyone's there for you, your center of attention own it. A lot of people like, were asking about money and budgeting and honestly I don't really like to talk about money that much just because I just think it's a touchy subject um, but there are definitely ways to go around budgeting a wedding. They actually have some really great books. I've got one for my friend who just got engaged. I believe it's one of the top like selling wedding planning books um, I got it for my friend. It is called the Budget Savvy Wedding Planner and Organizer. So she's actually using it right now because she's on a budget for her wedding. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. You guys can check this out if you're interested. I actually read through it a little bit and it's really, really helpful. So if you are on a budget or you're looking for some tips, definitely check out that book. Um, I didn't really use any books besides my like Erin Condor wedding planner that showed me the timeline of everything that I need done which was super helpful but that's a really great book I will have it linked um, below too um, if you guys are interested. Maddie Crosby 94 said what was the most stressful part? I, w I would say as far as the planning and everything for the wedding a lot of it was like kind of family related I would say like I just feel like Again, it kind of goes back to like pleasing people and making everyone happy. I have to say that blending families isn't always easy. It ended up being so great and we were so happy that we had all the family that we did at our wedding from both sides. Um, but I would say that like planning a wedding, and I was just talking to my mom about this the other day, but planning a wedding definitely brings out different sides in people and this is not like talking specifically about anyone but I'm just saying just in general if you are planning a wedding you know what I mean because every bride that I talk to when I do weddings for like hair and makeup brides will like vent to me about their friends or family or bridal party or whoever um, you know feeling some type of way or acting out or causing drama like I feel like that is the biggest thing like Planning a wedding does cause a lot of drama. It causes some relationship issues with people. Again, you feel like you have to please people, but also keep in the back of your mind that it's your day and it's the way that you want it. Um, I feel like that was the most stressful, honestly. Of course, there's like bumps along the way. My dress fitting's not going well. You know, different things with vendors, um, but Overall, I feel like the drama, the issues with people, blending families, that is all probably what is most stressful. So keep in mind when you are planning a wedding that there might be some issues with people, there might be some uh, feelings hurt, there might be some emotions thrown around. That is all I can say about that. I, I mean, like I said, I don't want to go into detail about anything, but I feel like that was the most stressful, was keeping everyone happy and keeping it about your day and the happiness that the wedding brings, not about other things. Kate in row seven said, best advice for brides wanting a winter wedding in a cold climate, would you recommend? I actually had like a faux fur little wrap that I wore. And to be honest, I was not cold. I feel like it was probably my dress, like all the layers and like fabric that I had on. And I also had sleeves. 
I wasn't super cold like honestly I feel like my face was cold and maybe my feet were cold but other than that I didn't feel that cold as far as my bridesmaids I did have a little like shawls or like pashimas I think that's how you say it I could be saying it wrong but they're little like scarf scarf little um, throws I don't know if they were super warm but like my venue had a ton of heaters everywhere the barn had heaters inside so I don't think it was too cold in the barn and then everything else was inside there was only a short amount of time that we were outside doing pictures and I felt bad for my girls and of course the guys as well I mean they have suits on so it's a little bit better but like a lot of the girls that have sleeveless dresses on you know um, it was a little chilly and just keep in mind that you might not have the best weather I mean if we had snow it would have been a whole different story um, we might have had to do a lot of our pictures inside and I'm glad that we got all the pictures that we did outside. Could we have gotten more full bridal party pictures? Yes, but honestly we didn't because of the cold. So we didn't do a first look, but we got our bridal party pictures of like just the bridesmaids separately and just the groomsmen separately. And then after the ceremony we got like a few, and I mean like a few, <laughs> we got a few pictures of the whole bridal party together. So the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the bride and groom, flower girl. We got all of us together, but we honestly only got a few pictures. We did not get a lot, and I was okay with that. I honestly wanted to spend more time getting pictures of just me and Anthony and Bella and like get our family pictures done. I didn't want to have my whole bridal party out there in the cold. They were hungry. They wanted to go to cocktail hours. I said, look, we have good enough pictures. You know, as long as we have a few of the whole bridal party, I'm okay with that. I would rather spend more time before the sun goes down, that was a whole nother thing. We were beating, we were trying to beat the sun going down because our ceremony was later in the day. So our ceremony was at 4, the sun went down at like 5.27, 5.30. So we were literally on like crunch time after the ceremony to get the pictures in that we needed. Would I recommend it? I feel like it's for certain people, guys. Like, there are certain brides that would never get married in the colds and would not have a winter wedding. And there's brides that would like never have a summer wedding. Like for for instance, for me, like I couldn't imagine having a wedding in the summer because I hate being hot and I hate sweating and being like sticky and like I would have to touch up my hair and makeup so much in the summer and I never had to do that in the winter. So that was a great perk of getting married in the winter time was that I never had to worry about like my hair falling out or my makeup getting messed up. And of course I had to like retouch up my lips, but like I'm not sweating off my makeup. Um, and like that's why a lot of people get married in the spring and in the fall because it's in between being really cold and being really hot. So in the off season, it is a little bit tricky with the weather, but I honestly would recommend it. I think winter weddings are stunning. I think they are gorgeous and I love, I love seeing winter weddings. And I also love seeing weddings that are in snow. Like I think that that is gorgeous. I don't know how I would have handled that walking in the snow. But I think that that's gorgeous. So I would recommend it, but like again, it's for certain people. Like there's not many people that like getting married in the colds. Some prefer hot over colds. It's really, I think, personal preference. So Sandra underscore can said, what should be the top things to plan and purchase first when it comes to wedding planning? You guys can definitely see a bunch of this um, over on my vlog because I did share a lot of that. I shared a lot of the things that I purchased for my bridesmaids um, on Etsy shops. I purchased a lot of things on Etsy. Oh my gosh. Pretty much majority of the stuff for the wedding was purchased on Etsy. The first thing you should do is get pick a venue. A well, yeah. Pick a date, you would pick a venue. Yeah, so yeah well, yeah, I guess it goes hand it in goes hand because hand the venue hand. will give you the dates. Yeah. The venue will tell you like what dates are available. So for instance, like we actually wanted to get married in January. But January didn't work out because they had no Saturdays available. We also wanted a Saturday, so then we had to push it to February 9th. So that was one thing. But I would say the first thing to plan is a date, time of year that you want to get married, and also a venue. You have to book your venue first before you do anything. And of course, like where you want your ceremony to be located if you're doing it separate. Um, and then as far as purchases, I would say maybe things for the bridal party but to be honest like they didn't take that long to get in and I got mine like super early so on the timeline yeah, I got mine in the last like three weeks yeah um where is my wedding planner um I'm gonna take a little ride real quick where to a place where they have food oh sounds good
Oh, oh, you want hungry? Oh, you want food too? Yeah, can you get me something? Yeah. What do you want to get? Oh, it's probably dry skin. When you are first planning, the biggest things to lock down are your vendors. So I would say two of the biggest things is your venue, but also your photographer. I think the photography is something that you should book first before other vendors, only because um, obviously photographers get booked up quickly. They book well in advance. Um, I actually was really nervous that my photographer was not going to have my date available because we originally chose 2020, January of 2020 and I had to switch it and thank God she was available. I will, I will have her link below. I already said that. I'm going to have all my vendors link below. Um, and then second would be a videographer if you are interested in videography. I had to research a lot for videography. I asked multiple people for my date and a lot of them were not available. So that was hard. But as soon as you pick your date, I would definitely, you have to have your date first, of course. But as soon as you pick your date, I would definitely reach out to a photographer or videographer, do some research and book those as soon as possible because they book up quickly and they book well in advance. Like my photographer is already booking for like two years out. So that is very important. As far as like other purchases, like all the things that I purchased on Etsy, things for my bridal party, like all of that can really wait. I purchase things very early on because I was just nervous about shipping things. Wait, and I this did. one says future Mrs. Morrison. I'm not future anymore. I am. So let's just go to. Wow. You realize how long have you been filming? Oh, oh no no no. That's I've I know it's stopped not. it three times. Yeah. I've probably like two hours. Yeah, I've been filming for like two hours. It's a long time. Fourteen to nine months before. This is like the first page. Now again, all of these might be different. This is just what's in my Erin Condren planner, but and you might not be getting married 14 months before, you might be getting married two years or, you know, however long, but this is just like, you know, 14 to nine months before. Um, create a budget, choose your wedding party, start drafting a guest list, book your date, uh, book your officiant, book your date, research photographers and videographers, hire a planner, look into music options, florists and caterers, discuss honeymoon. I'd say like for the first things that you should definitely do is figure out who's going to be in your wedding party, pick your date, discuss a budget, and research photographers and videographers and of course book your venue. Those would be the first things that I would do. Of course you don't want to start researching venues and things before you figure out your budget. So Vanessa May 590 asked how did you sleep the night before? Congrats. Um, I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> I feel like I was literally up all night long and actually I was sleeping with Bella because we slept over my parents' house and uh, actually a lot of you guys asked, did you sleep separate from Anthony the night before the wedding? And yes, we did. Anthony slept here at our house and I slept over at my parents' house. We needed to start or like I guess the makeup girl and the hair girl were coming around like 7.30, 8 in the morning. And I needed to make sure I was up at like 7 to get things like ready and set up for everyone. So I wanted to just be over my parents' house and also also we wanted to sleep separately. So it just worked out. I went and slept over there with Bella and Bella slept great. I did not sleep at all. I was so like nervous. My stomach hurt all night long and yeah, I, I, I feel like I didn't sleep at all. So, and it was fine because... I wasn't that tired in the morning. I literally just got up. I think I was up at like 6.30 and I was just like ready for the day. I just wanted to get the day started and you're just, your adrenaline and like your, your nerves and stuff, you're just so anxious the day of that you kind of just catch a second wind and you're just like, you know, overwhelmed with everything that you don't even think about like sleep or that you're tired. <laughs> uh, underscore Abby underscore Bambi asked who was the designer of your wedding dress? My dress was Martina Liana um, and I actually can share with you guys a style number if you're interested. I will put that below as well. Um, and then my shoes were from uh, Badgley Mishka and all of my bridal party shoes were from Badgley Mishka. Uh, they sent us all over shoes and they were so stunning. I wore Badgley Mishka shoes for my, um, my shower, my bridal shower. I also wore some for my rehearsal dinner. They're all gorgeous. I'm gonna treasure them forever. Um, I, I love my shoes. They weren't the most comfortable things, but I did wear them like all throughout the night. I wore slippers for the reception. Well, 
For my first dance, I wore my heels. For all my dances, I wore the heels, but I did change into slippers throughout the night, and you know that was fine. But my my shoes didn't hurt that much. Alex Alexis A Pog, Alexis A Pog. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. What was your favorite part besides getting married? Anything funny happen? I saw this and I was thinking actually something funny did happen. Something else I guess went wrong and I didn't even think about this because it wasn't like something that went wrong on our side. It was the guys. So Anthony's brother traveled from Arizona um, and when they were getting dressed, like getting their pictures taken and getting dressed, he realized that he didn't have his white shirt. So the pictures were a little bit delayed and um, he actually had to literally drive down to Kohl's and get a white button down shirt. So that was another thing that kind of like went wrong with like someone forgetting something. So a guy forgot their shirt and it kind of delayed the pictures, but it all ended up fine. You like couldn't even tell. It was good. And he was also the best man. And I cut him some slack because we actually heard from the photographer. She was like, someone forgot their shirt. So we're a little bit delayed. And I was like, who the heck forgot? Once I heard that it was his brother, I was like, okay. I was like, I'll, I'll cut him some slack. He traveled with three kids from Arizona. I was like, it's fine. But, um, but yeah, that was one other thing that went wrong. Make sure all of your bridal party has everything they need the day of. I like sent out like mass text to all my bridal party. I was like, make sure you guys have this. Make sure you have that. Don't forget this. Make sure you have all your money in an envelope. Like I was like, I was on top of it all. Samantha Tago asked, um, who coordinated your wedding on the day of? Did the, w did the venue provide a coordinator? And yes, I did say this before. They did have two people on hand for us the day of. They did everything for us. They were absolutely amazing, and I couldn't have done it without them. I didn't even need to hire a day of coordinator, and that's something that you should ask with your venue if you will have people there for you the day of to kind of like walk you through the day. Um, they were there for us through everything so um, super helpful and I didn't need anyone because I had them so Tegan Steinberg one said I'm getting married in October congratulations was there something special you did for your mom and dad um, so for the day of I gave them a little something um, like I said I gave them two handkerchiefs and they had a little message on them and I will I shared a picture that was the one thing I did for the day of. I wanted to give them something special to kind of like thank them for everything they've helped us out throughout, you know, the whole process. Um, and of course, I feel like I feel like it is kind of like tradition to give your parents something the day of, at least like the bride give their parents something. Um, of course, we did like the gifts um, at the rehearsal dinner. We gave gifts to the bridal party and the parents. But for the day of, I did give my parents um, their little gift and that was my little something special. Furious Honey asked, one thing you felt wasn't worth the money. Honestly, like I keep thinking about that and there's nothing that I could think of that wasn't worth the money for as far as like what we plan and what we what we did. Um, I know a lot of people ask like is a videographer worth the money? Is it worth it? Are photos good enough? Because I think a lot of people are back and forth between getting a videographer and not getting a videographer, videographer and I say it is absolutely worth it. But I'm also coming from you know a person that does YouTube for a living so like video is my life like everything revolving around video is so important to me. I love looking back at video. It's one thing to have pictures, but video I feel like just captures like the whole day and it also gets like you can you can visually see things happening as opposed to a picture. Um, I don't know. I, I totally recommend it and I think that having a videographer is so worth it. But as far as anything and not worth the money honestly I don't I don't I don't think so um if I think of anything maybe I'll put it below in the comments but I can't really think of anything I really think that everything that we got everything that we did was worth it in the end I've been filming this for so so long so I think this is probably gonna be like the last question that I answer if I need to do a part two I totally will if I didn't answer your question or if you have any more questions you can definitely let me know and I will do a part two if you're interested so the last question I'm going to answer 
is brianna.l.s01. What do you wish you knew while planning your wedding that you know now? Um, I would say the biggest thing is, and everyone tells you this over and over again, and it's so true, and you have to listen to them because, and I feel like I kind of said it before, but your wedding day will be spectacular. It will be amazing. And don't think anything otherwise. I feel like throughout the planning process, you're just so worried about every little thing and you want it all to be perfect, even though perfect doesn't exist. But really though, I feel like my wedding day was perfect the way it was. Even the ups and downs, the thing that went wrong, I was okay with it. All that mattered to me was the love that me and Anthony shared that day and continue to share. We are literally on cloud nine right now. That was the biggest thing for us. We just honestly can't get over how we felt the day of and just how amazing the whole day was. It was truly magical. And I feel like my hard work paid off. I feel like everything, all the planning, all the stress, the blood, sweat, and tears, not any blood. It was all worth it in the end. And no matter what, your day will be amazing. You will be the happiest you've ever been hopefully. I didn't think about anything else. I didn't think about how everything looked, you know, besides the florals getting messed up. I didn't care about any of that. All I cared about was enjoying that day with my husband. Looking back, so many people told me, like, no matter what, everything will be perfect. No matter what, it'll all be great. And I just kept thinking, like, no, like, everything needs to be like this, and I need to have this, and I need to order this, and I need to make sure this vendor knows this like it's all you're thinking leading up to the day of but I am telling you right now the day will be imperfectly perfect it will be spectacular magical I think that's it I don't know what else to say other than I had the most amazing day ever our wedding is definitely something we will remember for a lifetime and I can't wait for this next chapter. Um, I hope I answered enough questions for you guys. If this video is so, so long, I apologize. Um, if you have made it to the end of this video and have watched the whole thing, thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please reach out to me. I will definitely answer them if I can. And I think that is it. You guys can look forward to our wedding video coming out. Please be patient with us. We did get kind of like an estimated time from our videographer. They said 8 to 12 weeks, which I know is a long time. We're waiting for it. We're so excited to get it. And I, I cannot wait. But um, I'm going to be on them like every month and make sure that, you know, I can get an estimated time and see how things are going. So... Um, yeah, please be patient, but in the meantime, you can go over to my vlog, you can check out the behind the scenes video if you haven't seen that already, and also check out my whole wedding planning journey. I have vlogs, you know, of the whole year leading up to us getting married. I hope that I gave you some good advice. I did my best. If I can think of anything else, I will put it in the description, but please follow me on all my socials. I will have those listed in the description, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, all of those will be listed below and at the end slate. Please subscribe if you aren't already. I will be posting more, guys, I promise, within this next chapter. Maybe, maybe we will be starting a family soon. I don't know. Let's have some good vibes coming to us. Um, <laughs> we, will, we will be starting a new journey together as husband and wife. Um, very, very excited for the future that's all I can say. So um, please subscribe and subscribe to my vlog channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.